Okay, welcome to Random Guitar Duels, where we put a bunch of guitarist names into a big glass bowl, shake up the bowl, draw out two names, and then we compare them, and you guys vote in a poll to tell me which one you think is best. We started off with 50 guitarists, and we're now down to the final 38 in 19 separate matchups, single elimination matchups. And if you want to be the first to vote in future polls involving guitarists like Jimmy Page and George Harrison and Vivian Campbell, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Van Halen, Joe Satriani, and Eric Clapton, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you'll be one of the first to know. This particular matchup is between Michael Schenker and Ted Nugent. And the way this works is I give you a couple of points on each guitarist and then you guys go ahead and vote in the poll and leave comments in the section below so so far as Michael Schenker goes let's start off with the fact that he's one of the greatest soloists in rock and roll history and writes his solos the way that a classical musician might do it but they still retain a spontaneous feel and because he composes his solos he's also really good at overdubbing them which gives his guitar a unique characteristic on studio albums another thing i would mention for Schenker is his use of speed and by this i don't mean shred i mean speed i mean he's able to make melody when he plays fast rather than just going up and down the scales kind of mechanically like certain shredders do and i think that helps him stand out it gives his playing flash but it also gives it a lot of musical sensibility and the final point that I would make that he has a great combination between like a rock and roll feel but classical music precision so you've got spontaneity but you've got no notes out of place Schenker's one of those guitarists that doesn't have any problem at all recreating his sound in a live setting right to this very day in fact all right moving on to Ted Nugent one of the first things that you might notice about his guitar playing is he's a great riff writer. He's really good at coming up with memorable riffs. Not just catchy tunes like Catch, Scratch, Fever, but really good riffs like Great White Buffalo. And I think that there are times when his riffing overshadows his ability to make the guitar speak emotionally. In other words, people look at certain songs that he does stranglehold or what whatnot and they think well this is the pinnacle of Ted's guitar playing but in reality he has a bluesy side to him that doesn't come out quite as obviously as the catchy pop side but it's part of his pop playing and it's an important part so down in there there's a bluesy roots player which I think is really important which connects to my second point about him which is his clean tone his disdain for using a lot of effects pedals or elaborate setup he's not a purist but he plays with a real sense of primitivism which it's true not only to his character but to his style. The third thing I would say about him is that he is a tasteful player. He's another one of these guys that doesn't overplay. I think that if he wanted to, he could just shred away, but he doesn't. He chooses to leave a lot of space between his notes so the listener can appreciate what he's doing. So those would be my three points for each of the guitarists, and now I'm interested to hear what you have to say. So leave a comment in the section below. Remember to like and subscribe, but most importantly, vote in the poll. Thanks a lot.